Hi there. I'm going to start this video off by showing you just how easy it is to use TrueCrypt. Uh, I will start by making what is essentially a box for you to put files in and have them encrypted. Uh, I'm going to continue that analogy when I get to explaining uh, the second part, which after I am finished explaining or showing you how to use TrueCrypt, I will explain to you what encryption is and why you want to use it, and then I'll explain SSL and explain to you why uh, encrypting with TrueCrypt is superior to using SSL. Well, superior wouldn't necessarily be the, t the right turn. I I'll get to that. Anyway, TrueCrypt. So, we're going to start. I I'm going to assume that you already have TrueCrypt installed, so I'm going to start TrueCrypt. You're going to see a list of drives here. Ignore them for the time being. You are going to go to Create Volume. Now, we are not going to mess with encrypt a non-system partition drive or encrypt the system partition or entire system drive. What we are going to focus on, again, is creating a box. So, create an encrypted file container. We are not going to bother making a hidden TrueCrypt volume. We are going to make a standard TrueCrypt volume. Now, this screen right here is literally just choosing where and what the file name is going to be. Well, where the file will be stored and what the file name will be. So, I like bacon, so I'm going to call it bacon. It's going to be the bacon container. Now, this is going to be the encryption method, the or the algorithm, and then there's going to be the algorithm for the hash. Uh, you might want to read up on these later, but for now, it's, it's not all that important. I'm just going to go with the default settings. I'm going to click Next. This here, you have two options when creating a container. Uh, and depending upon which option you pick, this will do something different. If you choose to create a dynamic container, which we're not going to do today, we are, or what will happen is the th this will be the max size of the container after which the container can no longer expand. As you add files to the container, the container will expand up to this size. We're going to create a static container, which is akin to a box, that is of known dimensions. The dimensions will be static, they will be known, they will be... the box will be a stable size. So, it's going to be a one megabyte box. Now it's going to ask for a password. Anytime you want to open this box, uh, you're going to have to enter the password into the lock. This is the locking mechanism. Now, I'm about to do something that you should never, ever, ever do, and if you do it, you're a moron. It is. I am going to use an actual word for the password, and it's going to be very small. I'm doing that specifically for demonstration purposes. The password shall be bacon because we are using a bacon container. It's warning me. It's saying, hey, moron, what are you doing? I'm using a demonstration password, so I don't care. Uh, you should never use a password that is less than 20 characters long, and there are other uh, things that you should consider as well, such as making the password as random as possible, uh, never ever using words that are found in the dictionary, that includes names, uh, basically, it should be gobbledygook. But yes, uh, we're going to continue. This part has to do with uh, making the encryption strong. So basically, you're going to have a cursor disco. Do 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 dancing cursor. Do 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 do. The more you do this, the stronger the encryption. Do 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 do. Okay, I'm done. So then we are going to press format, and congratulations, the box, the volume, the container has been made. So now we're going to exit, but I will show you what happens when you press next. Takes you back to the uh, wizard for creating another volume. You don't need to do that, so we're going to cancel out of here or exit. Now, the volume is made. How do we open it? How do we put stuff in it? Pick any drive letter on here. doesn't matter which. If there were a drive called bacon, we could mount bacon into the bacon drive, and it would be that that's just double the bacon. It's bacon wrapped bacon, but we don't have that. So we're going to go with F because I like F and F is for fun and U is for you and me and N is for anywhere and anytime and all down here in the deep blue sea. Now we are going to select the file. The file, which file? The container. So here is the bacon container. We have selected it. It is selected. We are now going to mount the container. 
Now, uh, mounting the container, where did I put that? Uh, is akin to plugging one of these, this is a USB thumb drive, into your computer. When you plug this into your computer, your computer mounts the thumb drive. Same exact concept. Except in this case, it's not a physical thumb drive. It's just a file. Uh, if you, when, you, when you, okay, when we dismount it, it will be akin to pulling this out of your computer. But you will see that in a moment. Now, mounting, it asks for the password. The lock has to be opened with the proper password. So I had the password be bacon, so bacon is the password. And congratulations, it's mounted. Note the location of the mounted file. Note the drive letter. This is... Okay, we're going to pull this over here. Note how the drive... Okay, this is my computer, or computer, whichever, depending upon which version of Windows you're using. I'm going to trust that you know how to get to this particular screen. Uh, if you don't, I recommend that you Google it. But note here, look, drive F. This is bacon. This is our container. If you open this up, just like opening a USB flash drive, now, I am going to place a random file inside of this. It's like opening a box and shoving jewelry inside. I have placed index.html inside of bacon, my container. I like calling it bacon. <laughs> uh, yes. Now, we want to close the box and we want to lock it. How do we do that? We go down to TrueCrypt here and we press dismount. Oh, look at that. It disappeared from the menu and it disappeared from the screen. Now. If we were to go to my computer again, look, it's no longer there. Why? It's not accessible. It's not mounted. You've unplugged your USB flash drive, essentially. Not literally, but basically, yes. So, same concept. Uh, let's see here. Now, if you were to go to uh, the location of your container and attempt to open it, Oh, look, Windows doesn't know what to do. You know why? Because Windows doesn't know what type of file that is. You know why? Because it's a big pile of... And it doesn't know how to read it. It can't do that. So, that is how you use TrueCrypt. It's very, very simple. There's no reason not to. Uh, if somebody else wanted to open your uh, TrueCrypt file container, all they would need is the password and to have TrueCrypt involved, and they would mount it the same way I just showed you. Then they would have access to it. Other than that, nobody else does, because they can't open it. Assuming your password is strong enough. Use a strong password. Now, uh, TrueCrypt also has the capacity to encrypt an entire drive or to make a hidden volume, which this... We're not going to get into that, but it's those are other useful features that you should be aware of um, if you need it for any particular reasons. Now, that all established. What is encryption? What does it do? Encryption is uh, you have a box. I, I'm, this is an analogy. You have a box, and you have usually, I mean, there's, there's key pair encryption, public and private key encryp uh, encryption. And in public and private key encryption, which is what SSL uses, we'll get into that, uh, you have two matching wands. Now you have your file, and when one of the wands hits the file, it turns into a giant pile of crystalline dust, and you can't tell what the heck it was. Could have been a fish, could have been a tree, could have been a car. Nobody knows. It's unreadable. It's uh, indistinguishable. Now, when the matching wand taps the, uh, the pile of dust, it reconstitutes itself into whatever the original form was. Uh, encryption works just like that. You take a magical wand, i.e. A, uh, a key, and you use that key to encrypt in a weird... It's like talking in code. Actually, it is talking in code. It's just a very, 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 very complex code. Uh, and it, it's all mixed up, and nobody can figure out what the heck it says. Uh, and the more complex it is, the more likely it is that it will not be solved for many, many, many years. Uh, so, that is what happens with the TrueCrypt volume. Anything that you place inside of a TrueCrypt container is encrypted with a very heavy level of encryption, and the only way it can be accessed is by the password.
And, of course, they have to guess that it is, in fact, a true crypt volume and attempt to mount it with that. Uh, if they're not too bright and they don't know how to, they don't know to try that, then you're good because they can't even get to the password thing if they can't figure that much out. Uh, so that's basically how that works. Um, the the key pairs, the the magic wands, they go together. No wand, no key, can unlock anything from any other wand or key. Mind you, wand, key, synonymous, same thing. Uh, it's an analogy. So, they go together. Uh, it's it's very, very safe. It's very good. As far as SSL is concerned, uh, you don't want... Try... SSL is not suitable for everything. Uh, SSL will encrypt... For instance, SSL will encrypt the channel of communication so that... Let's say there's um, some script kitty or something sniffing your ports and, and reading the information going to and from your computer. Uh, if you're sending encrypted information over HTTPS, he can't read it. It's, it's jumbled up. It's, it's, it's code language. It's a big pile of... So uh, that's, that's good. But the problem is that once it gets to its location... Let's say you're trying to store files on the cloud. Your files are no longer encrypted. Only the channel of communication was encrypted. Your files are now just plain files. Uh, cloud, not very secure. So the solution to that, well, to both of them, is to send your file already encrypted, like in a true crypt volume. So that way, once it, once it gets to its destination, it's still encrypted. And only people with the password can access it. Uh, that's good for a number, of, a number of things. Uh, but basically, anybody that's trying to eavesdrop, whether it be the government or uh, advertisers or malicious uh, black hat advertisers or hackers that are just trying to ruin your day, uh, <laughs> look at me, I can destroy people. <laughs> uh, yeah, nobody can read it. So it's it's very good. It's very important to do that. There are several philosophies of privacy. One is that everything, basically, should be public, which would basically be the uh, the philosophy of Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. Then there is the hmm, I will choose my words carefully. There is a competing theory, which I would. Uh, What's the term? It's right on the tip of my tongue. It's an A word. I want to say affirm, but that's not the word I'm looking for. But anyway, that'll do. Uh, yes, I, I affirm this philosophy. I uh, identify with this philosophy, which is that anything that is not explicitly public should be private, which means everything should be encrypted. Everything, doesn't matter what it is, should be encrypted. Uh, it's kind of like the old saying that anything not said in the presence of three persons, at least three persons, should be considered private. Uh, that, it's a pretty good thing. Yeah, well, when I'm trying to communicate with uh, one other person over, let's say, for instance, Skype or something, uh, everything that I'm saying should be between me and them, right? Any files that I try to send to them should be between me and them, right? Well, a lot of people don't think so, and they're actually watching on Skype. I mean, you got the NSA on there, and anybody else that knows how to compromise that particular system. There's all sorts of... <laughs> Skype is a very buggy software. I'm looking for a, a better alternative. Haven't found one yet, but I... Uh, uh, I don't like using it. I really don't. Uh, I use it because I have to, not because I want to. So, uh, yeah, yeah, different topic. Not going to get into that. But yes... It's generally a good idea to just keep everything private um, unless you explicitly want it public because it, you never know how little details can be used against you and there are many people that are uh, seeking to... I, I mean, really, do you, you want your internet company to be building a profile on you that it can sell to big companies so that they can specifically target you with advertisements in in uh with 
fancy psychology to try to get you to buy things or convince you that you need something that you really don't need? Is that really what you want? You want people making money off of you without your permission or without your knowledge? Is, I mean, really? I think that's uncool. So, uh, another, as far as encryption is concerned, another, another way to ensure that you're always using HTTPS, uh, because again, HTTPS is good, it's just not suitable for everything, but anytime you're browsing the web, you want to be using HTTPS. Uh, I recommend using a VPN. A VPN is very good. If you are looking for a VPN that you can use that is actually uh, reputable, I recommend privateinternetaccess.com. Uh, I use them myself. Mind you, not all VPNs are created equal. Uh, some VPNs are not privacy-oriented. Private Internet Access obviously is. Uh, there are various reasons to use a VPN aside from just privacy in general, uh, but if you want a fairly good level of privacy on the web, you need to be using a VPN. Uh, if you're not using a VPN, you have no expectation of privacy whatsoever. So um, they're cheap. They're not bad. Uh, I think private internet access, you can get a year's worth of service for $42, was it? Something like that. Yeah, but it's very cheap. Uh, they have very good quality servers, very high um, uh, bandwidth. I don't see any s real slowdowns unless I access a, a server, one of their, their VPN servers that are they're very far away. But uh, if it's at least something in the country, <laughs> in my country, then uh, I, well, I mean, you could use, VPNs are useful for a number of things, not just, not just necessarily security, like uh, if you're, trying to well here's here's an example i was having problems uh connecting with somebody on skype the other day i was trying to have a call with them and the connection quality was just really suffering and sometimes the nodes between you and them that are relaying the information can be sort of having some latency issues or they could be having high uh server load or something and so your connection might end up suffering even though there's really no rational reason for either of you to be having problems. So what I did was I just connected to my VPN and then I talked to them through that and what that did was it changed the circuit through which I was actually connecting to them such that completely resolved all of the uh, the issues. I could hear them. They didn't sound like a tin can or a robot. I, I made a joke. I said, you, you sound like you could be in a Daft Punk video. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I highly recommend using a VPN, but that's that pretty much covers this uh, in a brief sort of way. I could get much more into detail on, on for instance, why you would want to uh, encrypt everything, but, yeah. this. Please take my word for it. 